Hey guys, it's Mike of Black Cat Amplification. I've just finished up a really nice restoration on a 1937 True Tone made by Detrola uh, three band radio. And this also is a guitar amplifier and I've added Bluetooth so you can stream your music through it. So this is actually built in 1937 uh, according to some of the date stamps that I saw when I was working on this. And this is a very rare model radio. Um, apparently it's very highly sought after for radio collectors. But what I decided to do for this restoration since I build guitar amplifiers is to modify the circuit to allow it to accept a guitar input. And I also added a Bluetooth board to it so you can stream your music. When you turn the power on, the Bluetooth comes on automatically. You can pair your device and start to stream your music right through it. So let's go through the features of this really quick. So the radio features a really nice speaker. That's the original speaker. The dial has been restored as well, up to the best I could do. It's really nice and clean. This radio was pretty dirty. I mean, I would say for a radio that's over 80 years old, this thing really cleaned up nice. It, this is, The unique thing about this radio is it has a motorized dial system, which is really wild. Uh, especially for 1930s. Uh, not many radios had something like this. It actually has a motor that when you press these preset dials, it'll go to a specific spot on the dial. Now, of course, in today's standards for AM radio or shortwave, these stations are no longer in service, and it probably also depended on what state you were in, but they can be actually configured to specific channels. So you have your volume knob here, and this is also your power. Let me turn this light out. You can see how the dial lights up really nice. I've replaced lamps, which were really, really hard to find the particular lamp that this took. I had to order them from Canada. Um, so you have your volume, you have a tone knob. Uh, this is the tuning knob. So if you want to fine tune it, and this is the band selector. So you can see when you press um, these stations, the dial automatically turns here and goes to that station. Um, so right now, let's see, this is on, furthest selected to the right is the um, AM band. Uh, I'll tune this in a station in a minute. Um, this is the shortwave radio band, okay? And then you switch it here and it's the police band. Now, of course, in the 1930s, they actually had a police band you could listen to, but in today's world, I don't know if there's anybody operating on those frequencies right now. Maybe in certain areas, uh, maybe there's some underground radio stations that use it. But those are the three bands. And there's also this um, fourth band, which is just kind of a neutral. And I recommend when you're playing a guitar or auxiliary through this, um, that you switch it on there just in case there's any extra noise. Although the circuit does cut out the radio bands completely when you switch it over to Bluetooth or guitar input. So let me show you the back real quick. So here's the chassis of this radio and the speaker you can see right in the back. This thing was so dirty, I spent months cleaning it. I also replaced a number of tubes. Um, these shields on these particular two tubes here are actually helping to filter out sound so that you'll get a better station, you'll get a better quality. Um, and then of course you have your IR and your RF um, modules here that you can do the tuning and uh, which I've already set for this radio for maximum performance. This is the dial in the back for the motorized tuner. The motor is actually located back in here um, and there's a rectifier tube right there. There's also a magic eye tube. Now this was a very, a lot of radio collectors like this magic eye because um, it's really neat when you tune in a station the, the eye glows green and then part of the frequency changes so that it, it the frequency glowing piece will come in together once a station comes into tuning. Uh, that was the purpose of those tubes. It's more of an aesthetic tube uh, than anything. This piece right here which is um, coming off of the dial, motorized dial right here, 
uh, and it's screwed into the top here. This is actually um, a connector that you can connect to set the presets of the dial. You can connect those, and I have instructions on how to do that. I haven't actually set any because I really don't think it's worth setting because depending on where this radio goes, there's going to be different AM stations or shortwave stations are going to be on different frequencies in a different state. So I didn't actually set any presets. There's also a, uh, I ran these extra wires off of here. This would be to connect an external antenna cable. And I highly recommend connecting it to maybe like a large piece of metal in the house, or if you do have a radio antenna that would work with this, because you'll get a much better signal for the radio. Uh, also, this is a ground wire, and if you connect this to a ground in the house, you're going to also cut out a lot of extra noise if you're able to do that. Not necessary to operate the radio, but it is a nice feature. This is the original plate here for the radio, and what I've added here as part of the circuit, just to make it as simple as possible, is there's a switch here for radio or auxiliary. So if you want to use the radio, you just have this switch down. If you want to use guitar or Bluetooth or anything else auxiliary, you switch it up. And this is kind of a mode selector. So what that'll do is that'll cut out all of the radio frequencies so that you're using the input here, okay? And the input, this is the Bluetooth connector. This is actually running into a Bluetooth board which is integrated inside of the chassis now. And what you can do is uh, if you want to run the internal Bluetooth, just plug this directly into the input or leave it plugged in and you can stream to Bluetooth from your devices. Uh, as soon as you turn the radio on, the Bluetooth comes on. Um, and there's no annoying voice or anything like that. It'll just beep once your uh, signal's connected. And uh, this is where you would also plug in your guitar. So you disconnect the Bluetooth, you could plug in your guitar, or you could plug in any type of auxiliary device like an iPod or something else with an adapter, because obviously this is a quarter inch um, and you would just need an eight inch adapter. Now I'm including one in this with the sale. So this is um, one. So this one will come with this radio. So you can use this here as a, uh, say you had an, had an iPod or something, you could plug this in and just plug your iPod directly into this. This is a gold plated, so it, it sounds really nice. Um, but if you just wanna use the internal Bluetooth, just plug that in just like that and leave it there. The speaker's a really nice sounding speaker and that's all been restored. It's, it hasn't been reconed, it's just been cleaned very delicately and everything around it has been cleaned and restored. The entire chassis has been cleaned and all the capacitors have been replaced. The circuit has gone through pretty much with a fine tooth comb. Uh, any, a couple resistors replaced, not that many resistors, but mostly capacitors that are, have gone bad over the years. So this has all been upgraded and is in working condition. So I've got AM radio station switched on on the selector and uh, it's late at night. So um, right now there's not a lot of AM stations broadcasting this late at night, but I did find some kind of a Spanish uh, talk station. It's probably, a, it's a pretty weak signal because uh, I think this station is actually located in Washington DC and I'm in Baltimore, actually north of Baltimore. It was coming in pretty good. There it is. So here's a uh, AM radio station. Tone knob. All right, this is a shortwave band. I don't have an antenna hooked up, so I'm not getting a whole lot of stations, but um, this is something that's coming through. Kind of got to play with the, the dial sensitive to it's very sensitive on the shortwave band but if i had an antenna hooked up or if it was grounded to the house be able to pick up a lot more stations 
shortwave seems to work a little better at nighttime. Um, AM, not as much because not as many people are broadcasting at night on AM. Uh, AM can come in, get a lot of stations I get during the day. Shortwave, I get a lot of stuff at night when the radio signals are a little less locally and you can pick up more. Uh, it's also good to be near a window if you're going to use the radio. Um, and if you have some type of an antenna that you can hook up the antenna wire to, you'll get a lot better stations. All right, and what you've all been waiting for, using this as a guitar amp. Let's pipe some guitar through this speaker. You can see the tubes are glowing right here. Everything's good and warmed up. All you have to do is make sure that your switch is on auxiliary, unplug your Bluetooth, and plug your guitar in. All right, guitar's plugged in. Here's the cable right here. It's running right into the input. So you got your volume knob. And it actually has a, a little bit of uh, dirt to it when you push it, when you crank it up. I do have a reverb pedal hooked up just to kind of give a little bit of the simulated sound of a room, but that's the only thing that's turned on here. Last but not least, streaming Bluetooth through using my uh, mobile phone. I just got a YouTube channel on with 1940s music, streaming through 1937 radio, Blue, built in Bluetooth. I'm so 